On August 7th, Russia used H-47M hypersonic missile, known as Kinjal, in strike on Ukraine. This way, the Russians tried to destroy a military facility in the Vinnytsia region. And it seems they managed to hit the target, since the Ukrainian air defense cannot yet shoot down such missiles. Russia has very few supersonic missiles and they are rarely used. Russia mostly uses sea-launched caliber missiles from ships and submarines in the Black Sea. Throughout the military campaign, Russia has constantly been bombarding Ukraine with these missiles in an attempt to destroy ammunition and infrastructure. Civilians often become victims of these shellings. Also, Russia actively used H-55 missiles, also known as RKV-500. These missiles are launched from a Tu-160 strategic bomber. It was this missile that destroyed a civilian shopping center in the city of Kremenchuk. Recently, Ukraine has learned to shoot down most Russian missiles. Back in June, the Ukrainian command said they shot down 50-60% to of all missiles. But on August 8th, in the morning, Russia fired a dozen missiles at Ukraine and none of them reached their target. The Ukrainian air defense shot down all missiles. Also, a few days before, the Ukrainians were able to shoot down 7 out of 8 missiles fired. Perhaps that is why Russia has begun to use supersonic missiles more often. During the entire war, the Russians used Kinjal missiles only two times. Earlier, on March 18th, Russia was able to destroy an underground ammunition depot in Ukraine with such a missile. But that ammunition dump was not sufficiently protected. Now Ukraine has a network of underground depots that can withstand any missile hit. Kinjal is a relatively new hypersonic missile. It is very expensive and uses Western technology. No one knows how many of these missiles Russia has, but everyone agrees that there are very few of them. They were reserved for exceptional cases, for hitting extremely important targets. The primary carrier of missiles of this type is the MiG-31 fighter, but two 22nd-M and two 160 bombers can also be used. After being put into service in 2018, only a few dozen were produced. The warhead of the Kinjal missile weighs 500 kg and the missile speed can reach over 12,000 km per hour. The missile develops such a tremendous speed due to the launch feature. After being launched from an aircraft, the missile rises to a great height in the upper atmosphere. And when approaching a target along a ballistic trajectory, it can develop supersonic speed. That is, the missile actually falls from a great height at a right angle. And it is also accelerated by a jet engine, reaching 12,000 km per hour. It is clear that it is easier to accelerate a missile when it falls down than when it goes up. That is why it is so difficult to shoot it down with conventional air defense systems. Earlier, on Russian television, it was stated that such a missile could carry a nuclear charge. And in the event of a nuclear war, the enemy would not be able to defend against it. Russia claims that these missiles are invulnerable and basically cannot be shot down by any existing air defense system in the world. No one knows yet if this is the case. When the NASAMS anti-aircraft complex appears in Ukraine, we will know for sure. NASAMS is a Norwegian anti-aircraft missile system designed to deal with maneuvering aerodynamic targets at low and medium altitudes. It is considered the best in the world, even the White House and the Pentagon use them for their own protection. The Allies promise to supply two NASAMS batteries to Ukraine in the coming month. That's when it will be interesting to find out if it can shoot down Russian Kinjal missiles. But given the fact that Russia has very few such missiles, and most likely it cannot create new ones now, the risk from these missiles is not as great as from missiles of another type. Over the entire period of the war, Russia has already fired more than 3,000 cruise missiles into Ukraine. In monetary terms, this is more than 12 billion dollars. Please also watch our videos on why NATO is expanding in the East and how Ukraine will change the map of modern Europe.